According to the data on the internet, the World's Cup has five kilos of gold in it. And according to my calculations, if it was solid all the way through, it would have somewhere between 70 and 80 kilos of gold in it. That's as much as the weight of quite a large adult. And so it must be hollow. This month and the beginning of next month is the World Cup in football, soccer, to those of you who are not familiar with this. And this competition takes place every four years and involves all the countries in the world that have got through all the preliminary stages. And the central symbol of this competition is the trophy. And the trophy is chemically quite interesting because the main component is that it's made of gold. And everybody gets excited when they hear about gold. Gold is quite an unusual metal because it's really very soft. And you can't actually make anything that's very artistic out of pure gold. Well, you could make it, but then it's so soft that whenever people started handling it and a little roughly, it would start bending. A bit like trying to make things out of lead. And so people add other metals to the gold to make it tougher, to make it stronger. And in general, the more other metals you add, the stronger it gets. So with this big trophy, if it was made out of pure gold, the first time the footballer lifted it above his head, it would just bend. And this would not be a fitting end to the competition, though it might be the end of the footballer. Jewelers and those that trade in gold have come up with a really strange scale to indicate how pure the gold is. They measure the purity in a unit that is called a carat. In this scale, pure gold is counted as being 24 carat. So if you had half pure gold, it would be 12 carat. And as a compromise, the World Cup is made of 18 carat gold. That means 75% of the metal is gold and 25% is something else. Gold is also very heavy. It's one of the densest metals that there is. So there's some question whether the cup is really made out of pure gold or solid gold. If you look at the descriptions on Wikipedia and things like that, they say it's made from solid gold. What I think this means is that the metal part is gold all the way through. It isn't that there's a thin layer of gold and the rest is steel, for example. However, I think, and I have no means of going, that perhaps the ball at the top, which is the world, is probably hollow. So it's not solid in the, all the way through in the sense that there's no space. Because I don't think that it would be light enough for people to wave above their heads and also be a big waste of gold. According to the data on the internet, the World's Cup has five kilos of gold in it. And according to my calculations, if it was solid all the way through, it would have somewhere between 70 and 80 kilos of gold in it. That's as much as the weight of quite a large adult. And so it must be hollow. The Gold Cup is famous for a second point, that at the base it has two stripes of green, presumably to represent the grass on the playing fields. These green bands are made from a mineral called malachite. And I've got a small sample here, which comes from Ireland. And malachite is a copper compound. It's a mixture of its so-called basic copper carbonate. It contains copper, carbonate, rather like in chalk, and also it contains OH groups, oxygen and hydrogen. And it's quite a common mineral. You can see, I got this sample from a souvenir shop in Ireland. But it is quite rare to get it in large pieces. As far as I'm aware, malachite 
isn't used for anything except decoration. And it looks really good and it's very expensive. But you can get quite a good imitation of malachite very cheaply. I visited Russia 40 years ago and stayed in a cheap hotel and by the bed they had what looked like malachite tables. But if you looked at it, it was chipboard covered with a thin layer of green plastic and it looked just the same. But I think on the World Cup they've got the real malachite. I'd be really upset to discover it was plastic and chipboard. I'm not very interested in football. Um, I was a teenager when England won the World Cup in 1966. I didn't watch the game then, and I haven't watched the World Cup get match since then. But perhaps I will watch something this year, because I'm going on a trip to Italy during the World Cup with Brady and my colleagues, and I'm sure they'll want to watch.